Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. In this video, I'll be taking you through just the paintwork on this Mazda 3, painted in phantom blue metallic, paint code 32C. So prep work's been done. As you can see, we've already masked it up, taken it into the booth, and we're wiping it down with these degreasing cloths. Uh, I'm using wax and grease remover at the same time. We're doing a wipe on and wipe off. So uh, just take note that I'm wiping over my blend areas first. So the, the areas that I'm just going to be putting my clear coat in and blending my colour through, um, I'm wiping down first. And this is mainly because I do uh, dry sanding techniques. Um, I'm actually got an idea of making a video of dry sanding versus wet sanding. I'll outline the pros and cons of each one. So one of the things that doing dry sanding, you've got to be careful that the dust from the primer, because we haven't uh, had any liquids in that primer yet to pull the uh, dust out, uh, if you wipe over that prime area first with your degreasing cloth and your uh, uh, silicon remover well then and then you wipe over that and then you wipe over your blend you can actually be left with a bit of a milky uh, haze over that blend area which is the dust from the primer so trust me I know this because it's happened to me before it took me a little bit to figure out exactly what was happening but I figured it out and uh, now I've got great results doing dry sanding so first coat of base coat we're putting on here um, using the Devilbus GTI Pro with the H1 air cap uh, I've used this gun for a long time, H1 uh, gets it on real nice and uh, settings I'm using for this gun is uh, just full fan, have the pressure set between 27 and 28 PSI for your first coat, first two coats sorry, and then your last coat I like to jack the pressure right up to the two bar which is 29 PSI and uh, hold the gun back a little bit and you'll see me my technique when I do that later on. Uh, so the first coat, I'm just going over any parts that are not already covered. So anything that's primer colour. There's a couple of cut-throughs that you may have seen me uh, spray some colour over on that uh, blend door and on that fender area too. So this is just starting to get our coverage. After our second coat, we should have coverage. And the third coat is our effect coat, which is going to get the metallic to stand up nicely. So as you can see with this colour, it does really cover quite nicely. Uh, this first coat, I am putting on it on quite wet, as you can see, but it's really covering, it's uh, looking quite covered in the first coat. Um, using standock solvent base on this job, which I usually do on most of my jobs, as you guys will probably know if you watch uh, a lot of my vids. Uh, so you can see straight away, I just um, I cut out the footage for the inside of the door and I did that for the entire video just to stop the vid from getting too long. But um, I, I, by the time I started, I come back around. By the time I've done that door, I come straight back and that's just about right to go. Um, I've got the booth set to 30 degrees, um, which I like to spray at about 30 degrees. Some people say 25 degrees is better, but I think the hotter the better. It just um, helps the base coat dry that a little bit quicker. Um, and when you come up to your clear coat, it's going to help the clear coat dry a bit quicker and stop runs. It allows you to get it on nice and wet and it'll stop the flow, stop it from flowing too much. So as you can see now, we're going over the entire panel um, rather than just those cut through. So we're trying to get the entire panel to one color now and uh, we'll start doing a bit of a blend over this fender too so uh, with that uh, rear bumper bar it turned out that there was two different colors uh, on this car there was a, a one color on the front which was more the factory color um, and there was another color up the back there on that rear bumper bar so i decided to flick my color into that bumper bar just to make sure that when the job's done there's no color difference on it and it turned out quite nice if you hang around to the end there's a uh, look at the car when it's all finished off and polished up. So uh, yeah, this is our second coat on the door. Just a um, nice medium wet coat. As I say then, we should uh, have complete coverage and just waiting for our tech coat or effect coat. So basically, uh, I'll just give you an idea of what's happening with the metallic paint is that uh, this is pearlescent, so uh, 
the mineral uh, in the pearl paints is called mica and it's unlike the aluminium which is in your um, aluminium some of your metallics like the classic metallic uh, but these newer ones with the pearls uh, the mica is a five-sided um, mineral they're quite small uh, shards that you've got um, but the aluminium has two sides the mica has five sides so um, basically you don't want your last coat which is this coat here so we're doing our blend coat and our effect coat obviously at the same time and um, that's allowing uh, the sides on the, those metallic particles to stand up so if you uh, put this last coat on too heavy then if you think about the paint the paint's going to flow and if, if this paint is flowing then those metallic uh, particles are not going to stand up and they're not going to drop on top of the um, the paint so you probably noticed that um, I didn't use any blending aid on this color either so um, I'm just blending straight over my prepared panel um, I've found it's not necessary on these darker colors um, if it was a bit lighter of a color like a silver or even just a light green metallic I may have used the um, the blending aid but it's, it's not necessary um, so yeah, onto our clear coat now. I'm using Duke's Own Clear, which is a great clear coat. It's a cheaper clear. Um, I think it's uh, we pay about four hundred and seventy-five dollars for twenty liters of this stuff, so it's quite cheap, um, and it's really good quality. It's warranted by Standox too. So if you're going over the Standox base coat, uh, we actually don't void our warranty, which is great. Um, so yeah, uh, settings on this gun, uh, TE20 using the Pro Light, Vilbus GDI Pro Light. Uh, settings for this gun is have that fan wound right open, uh, have the fluid, uh, for this job I had it set to about two and a half turns out, and I've got the pressure setting at, uh, the pressure setting on that gun regulator you can see there, that's set to 25 PSI. So I've found with this gun, 25 PSI, using those settings, it'll just hum along. It's really easy to use. I recommend this gun to a lot of people new in the trade. It's, uh, it's not overly expensive, yet they're a great quality gun. You buy one of these guns, it'll still be going in 15 years if you look after it, clean it every day. And uh, I've actually got the original GTI uh, spray gun. It's still going strong. I use it every day. Uh, these guns in the US are known as the Tecna Pro and the Tecna Pro Lite. Uh, as far as I know, they're basically an, an identical gun. They look a little bit different, so I think they're mainly black in America. Um, apart from that, the main uh, difference is that you guys don't have a uh, air valve adjustment on the bottom of the gun. If you see any of my regulator down the bottom there, we've got a little air valve adjuster. Uh, Apart from that, uh, all the, the internals and the, the caps that you get are basically exactly the same. So, uh, yeah, look, to be honest, I don't even use that air valve. It, it just stays open, wide open the entire time. So, and I adjust it from the regulator. I always like to run a regulator on my spray guns, base coat, clear coat, no matter what, because um, I found if you don't, sometimes the pressure can jump up and down a bit more. Uh, you guys might actually notice me adjusting my pressure as I'm painting and that actually is to do with uh, pressure fluctuations. Uh, sometimes the lads outside, they can be uh, using all the air and my pressure will drop down and then they decide to stop using the air and my pressure will drop right up, jump right up. So um, yeah, I'm constantly adjusting it sometimes as I'm painting. It's just something you just got to get used to and try to get a uh, good finish at the same time as doing that. So. Um, as you saw there, a uh, good five minutes in between coats. I like to put my first coat on, mix up enough clear that you know it's going to be more more than enough for your first coat, and then you, you judge how much you've used on your first coat. You can go back and uh, most of the time if you have a look at how much you've used on the first coat, you use a touch more for your second um, and mix that amount up and then come back and you should be, shouldn't have too much wastage at the end. So you probably noticed that I didn't actually put any clear on the inside of that door on my first coat. Um, that's just to save on clear and there's no need to put any more than one coat of clear inside the doors. It's, uh, it's not get, getting hit by the sun. Um, so yeah, I decided to leave the um, second coat of clear uh, out on that, uh, that door 
just to uh, stop the vid from getting too long. I think uh, I included enough footage on this car. We'll just continue with this second coat of clear over the quarter panel, door and fender. We'll do our blend and I'll give you a look at the car when it's finished off to finish this video. Also hang around at the end, there's a couple of um, links that you can check out if you haven't already seen them. There's a uh, link to my channel as well. I've also got a Facebook site if you just haven't already, if you don't already know that. You can, uh, the description box of each one of my videos, you can have a look in that. There's a link to my Facebook page where I always post these videos and uh, photos quite a lot too, which uh, they're starting to become pretty popular. Always post new photos of the new guns as they come out and stuff like that. So make sure you check me out on Facebook. Keep up to date with all my latest. This job came out quite nice in the end. I was quite happy with the orange peel I was left with. Not much dust in it. We got the standard couple of pieces of dust which we left till the next day and we were able to sand out and polish up. So I like to usually bake the cars for 45 minutes. Some of the other guys, they give them half an hour, but I found after half an hour, it's still a little bit tacky. So I like to give it 45 minutes. If the guys are gonna jump on it that day and start doing their fitting up, and it can uh, help with uh, not getting scratched and stuff like that. So here we are doing that blend over the bumper bar. I like to try and find a small place to blend it out. So you can see there's just two tiny little spots there. It leaves us with less area to buff and less chance of that, that blend not uh, buffing up nicely. As it turned out, it blended out real nice. So here's a quick look at the car when it's all finished off. You can see it came out quite clean. Hang around for another minute and we've got a clip of the car when it's all washed up for you. Got a nice, real nice gloss level to it. It managed to maintain that gloss level too. It's important that you do give it five minutes in between coats. If you don't, then uh, you can start getting some solvent boil and stuff like that. So we've got a couple of bits of dust in that quarter panel, nothing major, nothing that can't cut out. Here's the car when it's done. Nice looking car, these Mazda 3s. Owners should be wrapped with that when they pick it up. So check out these links if you haven't already seen them. Thanks again for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.